Okay, there is uh, way too much going on right now, but I'm gonna try to explain what I'm doing. So I'm gonna set up two cameras and two tripods. Ah, look at that scene! Ah, ah, ah. That's insane! All right, well, I am on my way to the post office right now. And uh, don't worry, I'm just in my driveway, so I'm not doing anything unsafe. I have to admit, I have not been this excited to pick up uh, something for my photography in a really long time. So that's why I got the camera with me, just to document the whole process. All right, well, this is a disconcertingly huge box. Let's see exactly what it is I got myself into here. Oh yeah, here we go. Oh, here's the telescope itself. Oh yeah, what a beast. What a beast, the size of that thing. The control arm. Okay, and maybe this last box is a kitty toy. Okay, oh, sighting scope. That's a huge box for this little tiny bits and pieces, bubble level. Aha, the actual star diagonal, and then of course an eyepiece. Cool, let's set this thing up. First thing you see when you open up the telescope itself, never attempt to view the sun without proper filtering. You will die. Now it turns out that attaching a DSLR or mirrorless camera to a telescope is actually pretty easy. Uh, you only need a, this piece of equipment, which is called a T-ring. And I think this was about 12 bucks or something like that um, on Amazon. And this has the specific flange mount for your uh, camera, just slots in like a normal lens. And then this barrel slides in to the, uh, the viewer of the telescope. And then there are two set screws to hold it in place. And at this point, essentially what you've got here is a 2000 millimeter fixed focal length lens for your camera and uh, there's a focusing knob right here and so you just point it at your target focus and then uh, there's no aperture control because it's a it's a fixed and so you've got your shutter speed and your your iso to control your exposure and uh, and away you go uh, taking pictures and uh, and away you go uh, taking pictures several days later. Well, this has just been sitting here in my living room because it has been way too uh, smoky to see the moon. And it's also a new moon. So even if it was clear, the moon and the sun are so close together that the moon is basically washed out because it's only like this tiny little 1% crescent. I think today something could happen. We're about uh, two days after the new moon. Uh, the moon's about a 9% crescent, so it should have some volume of its own. It snowed last night and it cleared out all of the air. So there's no more smoke. It's beautiful out, absolutely beautiful. And the storm has continued to clear all day. So these great, big, beautiful patches of clear sky out. Once the sun goes down, I'll be able to see that crescent and finally put my telescope to use. So what do you think, monkey? Should we go take pictures with a telescope? Let's go. Right. Oh, oh, the moon is finally visible for the first time since I got my telescope. So I'm here, uh, pretty close to Mono Lake. Uh, there's, I don't know what's going on on the parking lot. There's about 70 cars down there. So I stopped here on the road to Navy Beach. Yeah, it's way above the horizon. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now it's time to actually set this thing up, see if I can even make this happen here. Let's go. So you haven't guessed, man, it is cold out. Okay, now for reference sake, I'm gonna grab a shot of the moon here with my 200 millimeter lens. There it is, lovely. Let's hook up the camera to the telescope to see what happens. 
isn't that a thing of beauty? Here we go. The very first time I'm looking at the moon through this telescope. I am so excited. That is cool. It fills almost the entire frame. So this thing is really wobbly, which is why I brought the uh, remote cable release. Just as a first glance here, let's go ahead and grab a single shot of the moon at 2,000 millimeters. Oh yeah, isn't that a thing of beauty? Well, I'm gonna call this a massive success for a first outing. I'm happy that I was even able to see the moon, let alone image it here in the camera. So I'm just overjoyed. I, I gotta be able to get my Z7 on here instead of the D850 so that I can use the in-body stabilization to help counteract that little bit of wibble and wobble that comes from the wind or touching the controls or anything like that. And two, I need to figure out how to use the telescope, the auto tracking feature here in the mount so that I don't have to keep manually chasing the moon down, but rather I can have the telescope automatically follow it so that I can shoot tons of frames, consecutive frames that line up perfectly and stack those together for a super high quality photo. Nevertheless, I am absolutely overjoyed and excited about this, uh, the ability to fill the frame completely with the moon. Uh, is pretty magical. Yeah, I'm stoked. Stoked, stoked, stoked. And cold. Cold and stoked. Two weeks later. All right, well, we are headed down to Lone Pine right now. Gonna hopefully shoot the full moon. There was a full moon early this morning, but it's still 99 point whatever percent full right now. And uh, got a plan to shoot it uh, tonight and tomorrow morning. Now this is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of mostly cloudy forecast that you like to see when you're shooting the full moon. I came down here just outside of Lone Pine last night and it really was completely socked in over to the east where I was hoping to see the full moon rise. Just thick, thick, thick clouds. Finally, three hours or so after the moon came up, it finally started popping through these patchy clouds in a very Halloween-esque way that was super cool to observe. I didn't get this telescope for this strictly astrophotography, just a close-up picture of the moon type of thing. I got it to extend what I was already doing, where I was combining the moon and the landscape. And that's really what I want to be able to create, are these photos with the moon aligning with something really interesting here on planet Earth. And do it in a very high quality, very in-your-face and up-close kind of way. And this is the first opportunity I've had to even try to do that since I got my telescope. And uh, I was worried it wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna happen. The forecast said mostly cloudy. In fact, there's a huge atmospheric river on the way that's supposed to arrive this weekend. And now there are clouds all the way around, except exactly where I wanna see them, right over to Manguya, Mount Whitney. So I'm gonna zap over to, to the spot, get in place and get some photos going. Okay, there is uh, way too much going on right now, but I'm gonna try to explain what I'm doing. So I'm gonna set up two cameras and two tripods. Ah, look at that scene, ah, that's insane. So I'm gonna set up my D850 with the long lens, the 200 to 500, to get a reference shot of the whole scene. And then with a telescope, I'm gonna have to take a whole bunch of different shots, a bunch of tracking shots of the moon, and then a bunch of static shots of the mountains so that I can put those together later in post for a really high quality composite. But they're gonna represent the actual scene as I saw it here in the reference shot. Are you kidding me with this? Holy crap, that's beautiful. All right, I don't know why I'm farting around with this camera first. This is the least important thing to do because if the moon drops behind any of those clouds up there, I'm gonna lose the quality of that. And I really wanna get some high quality shots of the mountains when they're glowing and the moon right now with the telescope. So let me get that going. Uh, uh, oh man, my power cord isn't long enough. Okay, 
great. Now we should be lined up on the moon and be able to track it as it pops out of the clouds and sinks down there behind the old, the old big guy. I gotta say, this I think is one of the coolest views of the Sierra skyline here with Lone Pine Peak and Mount Whitney just smashed up against each other like that. It just look like a couple of buds hanging out, just chilling. Oh, this is such an insanely beautiful scene. The, the sun's starting to come back out. It's lighting up Mount Whitney and the top of the Sierra, but the clouds are still in shadow. Lone Pine Peak is still in shadow. The moon's starting to drop into view. At this point, the sun is well and truly and beautifully out on the mountains. So I'm gonna grab a couple more quick stacks of Whitney and Lone Pine as a little pano here. I'm gonna do 40 shots each in a vertical orientation, stack those up and then merge those into a panorama that I can then combine with the moon shots. So let me take care of those. And then it's on to the most important time of the day, which is breakfast at the Alabama Hills Cafe. Lunar dreams are made of, woo! 